Good morning, everyone. As always, what you're supposed to do is you call yourself a Christian. Place your cross on first. That means seek God early. First thing, like I told you before, don't get up in the morning rushing to get to work or whatever. You understand? Give yourself some time. That means if you, you ain't got to stay up late just to feel like you're going to miss something, you're not going to miss anything. You understand? Get up a little earlier than usual. Start little increments. Set your clock 30 minutes earlier than what it used to be. Just make sure you seek God early. Don't be in a rush when you get up in the morning. You know, rushing gets you nowhere. And you're going to realize that in this story about Joseph. I'm going to continue reading on that today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When I stopped reading yesterday, it was in Genesis chapter 39, when uh, Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife, and he resisted. People don't understand when he say resist the devil and he'll flee, sometimes it's people. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was Potiphar's wife. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Look how the devil fled from this situation. He ended up going to jail behind it. That don't make sense, huh? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to read the last few verses of 39, starting with 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him in a prison, and a place where the, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now, remember what I said. You resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Look. Now, if he would have did it, he probably would have thought he won. Took over the man's house, slept with his wife. But in this case, by doing the right thing, it led him to go to jail and still have favor in jail. That's why you always do the right thing. You, you do what the Bible says. Do you understand? And it's going to benefit you in the long run. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So if you want what you to do to prosper, what that means you got to do the right thing. Go to, Gen go to the New Testament. See how to walk. See how God tells you to act and behave. Read Proverbs. Read Ecclesiastes. Read the every story in here. And you'll see what happens when you do what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And you'll see what happens when you do not what God wants you to do. So let's continue. Genesis chapter 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And, the, and Pharaoh was wroth against two of the, his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in the ward. And they dreamed the dream. Here go some more dreams. The dreamers. Now, one thing you're going to understand about Joseph, he could interpret dreams too. And that's going to benefit him. You see, God gives you gifts that benefit you. As long as you utilize it correctly, and for who? The Lord. Everybody got gifts. Everybody, most people are like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing for the Lord. You probably know. You probably just don't realize what, it's, what it is. But it's something you was born with. You know what I'm saying? Something that's gifted to you from the most high. Remember, utilize your gifts for the Lord. And they dreamed a dream, both of them. Each man in his dream in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream. 
the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look you so sadly today? And they said to him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. Now, think about that. What is he saying? I'm, I know how to interpret dreams. No, I got this gift from the Lord. The Lord is the interpreter. Mm -hmm. Same with Daniel. The Lord is the interpreter. You see, a lot of people got gifts like that and they credit themselves. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in, in the vine were three branches. And it was a, as though it budded. And her blossoms shot forth. And the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head, and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After the former manner, when thou hast was his butler. Now, if you think about that, that dream ended up being a prophecy. Hmm. Wow. So dreams can be prophecies of things to come? Yes. I talk to a lot of people. They be like, I don't dream. I'm like, hmm, that's weird. Ask the Lord about it. It's not normal not to dream. But think on me when it shall be well with thee. And show kindness, I pray thee, unto me. Now listen to what he said. But think on me when it shall be well with thee. And show kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. Behold, I had three bright baskets on my head. And in the upper, uppermost basket, there was a, all, all manner of bakerments for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation. Now the thing is, tell it like it is. You see, us as Christians, sometimes God reveals stuff for us. And we want to be, we'll reveal good news. Like the first dream. Hey, man, you know, you're going to get your position restored. Now, the second dream of the, the baker, it wasn't a, any good information he was going to receive. And sometimes as a believer, you're not going to give people good information. People tell me that all the time. My wife told me that the other day. Text me. I don't like talking to you because you never tell me nothing good. Well, let's put it this way. I'm going to tell you what I feel God wants me to tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm not a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I'm a God pleaser. And you should be too. I can't tell you. I told her, then I text her because I haven't been talking to her that much. I haven't talked to her physically in going on eight weeks. You understand? But I will text every blue moon. Or she'll text me and we'll text back and but I haven't heard her voice in, in, in a while. But she's like, that's the reason why she says she don't want to be around me. Because I never say nothing good. Let me put it this way, people. If you only expecting to hear good news, something's wrong with you. <laughs> something is wrong with you. You know, that's not normal. And if you only want to hear bad news, something's wrong with you. That's not normal neither. You got to be willing to hear good and evil. Because guess what this Bible is full of? Good and evil. That's what the world's full of. Good and evil. So if evil's in the world, and God wants you to tell somebody something, in regards as a warning, or, hey, you might want to stop doing it. Or they've been doing things bad, and then you tell them something, they're like, I don't want to hear that. Most people want to hear, everything's going to work out fine. 
That's what most people want to hear. Everything's going to work out fine. Well, let's put it this way. Everything's going to work out fine if you're doing what you're supposed to do in the eyes of the Lord. It's very simple. If you're not doing what the eyes, what you want to do, in the, what you're supposed to do in the eyes of the Lord, take, uh, what did Jonah have to tell the people of Nineveh? God's going to destroy this place. Was that good news? But if you receive it in a right way, like they did, it turned into good news because they repented. You see, well, a lot of people don't want to hear that because they don't want to hear their errors. Mm -hmm. They want to hear what what they did wrong. No, you ain't a man of God because all you tell me is bad things. Well, it was, a, it was also a prophet in the Bible that talked about this. He's like, I don't want to talk to him. He never said, said anything good by me. Well, he only telling you what the Lord tells you, him to tell you. And if the God, God wants to tell you something bad, it is what it is. Us as believers, we don't supposed to bow down because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We actually trying to reach their souls. So tell them whatever God put on your mind to do. Well, you can read Ezekiel. He said, if I tell you to tell somebody something and you don't tell them, their sin will be upon your head. So Christians, y'all better understand this. Stop telling everybody, everybody everything's going to be okay without telling them what God told you to tell them. I know plenty of Christians like that. I don't like to be in other people's business. You about your father's business. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday. Wait, wait, wait. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree. And the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Wow. Imagine hearing that news. A prophecy about your death. Well, guess who else got news like that? Jesus Christ. God didn't hide the fact that he was going to the cross to meet his death. Why do you think Jesus was in the, the garden praying, Lord, if this cup will pass from my head? But he said, nevertheless, let your will be done. That's all it's about. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday. So they had birthday parties back in the day? Yeah. I love birthdays. To me, they're the only realest holidays in the world besides the words that holy days that God posts in his Bible. But birthdays are actual days. I know there's some Christians out there, you shouldn't celebrate your birthday. Why shouldn't you celebrate another year that you made it through this earth? Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't you? That's a blessing from God. And everybody get one. Ain't that's amazing? Use your discernment. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among the ser his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his but butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. But the thing is, it wasn't time. But we'll read on. It wasn't time yet. God has a timing for everything. Now, remember what Joseph said to him. Think on me when it shall be well with thee. Now think about it. You just got put back in a position. You know. So think about from the the butler's perspective. Mm -hmm. You just got put back in position. You were just thrown in jail. You're probably trying to get make sure you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing somebody tell me is always this. Um, get self right. Well, yeah, where that come from? Make sure yourself is okay. Where that come from? First pull the speck. I mean, the order to pull the spit out your brother eyes, you must first pull the plank out of your own. So you got to get self right first before you can help somebody else. I'm just being real. You have to. That's just how it is, people. 41. The right time is about to come. And it came to pass at the end of two full years. Two years. Within your patience, possession, your soul. Two years. So that means... Joseph been riding in prison for two years. But you got to think about it. He was okay in prison. I ain't saying prison was fun. But he was favored in prison. 
I don't think nobody wants to be in prison wrongfully. Nobody does. I done heard stories about people who have been spent 25 years behind bars because the court system failed them. But eventually they got out. You see what happens? Favor. Don't look at it from like, man, I, I lost all these years of my life. I be reading posts from people like, I wasted all my years of my life with the wrong people, with toxic men or toxic women. Well, it's not wasted. What did you learn? <laughs> what did you learn from that? Like people love to badmouth folks once they leave the situation. But the thing is, you was with them. So it must have been something good about the relationship. So stop lying to everybody. I hated that. I should have never. Shut up. Stop lying. Stop lying on people. If it was so bad as you say it was, why do you been get out of it? Maybe because you're a Christian. Because God wants you to learn forgiveness. Maybe God's trying to see what you can handle. Mm -hmm. Don't look at nothing in your past. Like, people ask me this question. If you could change anything about your life, what would you change from the past? And when I was younger, I was like, well, I would do this and that now. But as now I'm older, I wouldn't change nothing. Because everything that I went through benefited me in the long run. Mm -hmm. So don't look back. Just like the Bible says, don't say in, that the former days were better than these. You don't inquire wisely concerning this. Why? Because you don't know the future. Mm -hmm. How do you know for a fact when you was 27 years old that that's the best time of your life ever and you still live it? That makes absolutely no sense. But a lot of people think that way. But I'm rambling. I got to teach it somehow. Chapter 41 of Genesis. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh's dream, and behold, he stood by the river. So it was the right time, it took the time. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well, favorite kind, and fat fleshed, and they that fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill favored and lean fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill favored and lean fleshed kind did eat up the seven well favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven died thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. Now think about this. God said he has no respect to persons. He's not a Hebrew. He's an Egyptian. But yet, Joseph is going to help him out. Actually, God is. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Mm -hmm. But did he really forget? It wasn't time. But it was time now, so he remembered. So do the math. Who put that thought in the butler's head to remember Joseph? God. All things work together for those who believe, right? Remember, brother said, you remember Joseph, who was interpreting your dream? I remember now. <laughs> when you look at the Bible, you got to look at it from that perspective. All things work together. All things. I remember my faults this day. Was it meant for him to remember it the day before? Nope. It was time because Joseph, he knew Joseph could interpret dreams. And then God showed us so the magicians and the wise men of Egypt were not as smart as they think they were. So God said, I got a, I got a smart, wise man, righteous, made just for me. I chose him to interpret dreams. 
and I'm going to use him here today. Let me pause and I will continue.